Okay, Shannon, let's take a look at your swings from your uh, your lesson from the other day. On the left, I have your swing um, that I filmed before any instruction, before we started working together. I just want you to kind of take a look at this motion. Okay, and here's the motion on the right, and this is the drill that I had you in, the flying wedge drill. All right, let's just take a look at both of these and sort of compare them uh, position by position. A couple of things really stand out to me, and I want to make a point of it and give you something to work on here. You know, first of all, from your first lesson, the setup still looks perfect. I love the way uh, you're setting up to the golf ball, ball position, feet flared out, uh, weight slightly forward, handle forward. Um, all these things look really, really good. And your takeaway is... I mean, it's super solid here. Left shoulder is working down as the left arm works in. Right knee straightening, left knee flexing. Really, really nice job here getting to the top of your backswing. The problem I'm seeing with your swing is that you haven't learned as of yet that the swing starts from the ground up, especially the downswing. You know, the, the downswing should be triggered by, you know, a, a sort of a bump in your... In your uh, in your left hip moving forward, left knee moving forward, so that we get to a position where um, as our weight is moving forward, our arms are just dropping uh, vertically. They're not shifting out and they're not moving out toward the ball. They're just dropping vertically and your right elbow is returning to your right side. So the problem that I'm seeing here is that you're starting the downswing with your upper body okay and sort of an indicator that you know that I that I can see here that that's that I know that's happening is notice a couple of things here I want you to key in on this foot key in on this foot watch what happens here at the change of direction as you start down Look at what's happening. As your arms are dropping, you are literally going up on your toes on both your left and your right foot. All of your weight is moving from the heels or from the from the the uh, your arches onto your toes. I mean, right now in this frame, your left heel and your right heel are completely off of the ground. Okay, that shows me that there's an upper body force moving first instead of a lateral hip slide in this direction because the action that we should see is the weight should you should be pivoting on your left heel and your right foot should be banking in this direction rolling in on the instep not going up on the toe okay so take a look at this See how your right foot is sort of screwing into the ground here, going straight up on the toe? And what that means is your right knee is sort of moving, breaking in and moving in this direction. Okay? The right leg should, at this, in these frames, should be relatively straightening. And I'm going to put another player up here in a second to just sort of show you the, uh, the lower body action and what that should look like. But you can see from here that the wrist angles, we focused a lot about you know, having a forward-leaning shaft and maintaining these wrist angles, but you can see just straight from the top, you know, as you start down, you still have, you have more than 90 degrees of, of, of wrist angle, and what I'm talking about in terms of measuring 90 degrees is this angle here, from left arm to the shaft. you got more than 90 degrees, so you, you're, you're in a very, very powerful position. The only problem is that you dump that angle at a rapid rate, because here, at the checkpoint at left arm parallel to the ground is that we still have more than 90 degrees and you're there so you're doing a nice job but watch how rapidly these angles dump when we get to P6 which is when the shaft is parallel to the ground your arms should form a triangle more in this fashion 
So your arm should be further down when the shaft is parallel to the ground. And by the time you reach this position, you can see that your left arm and the shaft are pretty much already in a straight line. Well, in layman terms, what that means is all the energy that you'd stored up in your backswing and created at the change of direction has been spent before you get to the golf ball. This is a tremendous loss of power for two reasons. Number one, the angles have already released. The energy stored up has already released. But number two, you're going to be adding a tremendous amount of loft to the face of the golf club at impact if you strike it solidly because your shaft is no longer leaning forward. You, the handle of the golf club will be leaning backwards through impact. You can see there, you know, take a look at the left wrist breakdown. This angle here and then this angle here. That left wrist breakdown means we've added a ton of loft to the golf club. Okay, so on the right here I had you in this flying wedge drill and we were really focusing on keeping your arms straight, um, really focusing on sequencing your body movements to allow for you to, to, to have more lag and more wrist angles. Now remember, creating lag by holding these wrist angles is a fallacy. It's a myth. It can't be done. Okay, Centrifugal force is what causes that th those wrist angles to dump. What I need you to understand is that the way that we maintain this lag or these wrist angles is by number one, first and foremost, we have to get our lower center pushing forward in the downswing. We have to get our left knee moving forward in the downswing. <clears throat> the biggest uh, thing that we have to do though is we have to keep our core, our center, moving and our hips turning through the shot, not stalling our pivot, stalling our shoulder turn. Because as your shoulders stall, those wrist angles are going to come out every single time. Okay. So we shortened the swing a little bit. We got you to where you're taking the club back to about left arm parallel to the ground. From here, I want you to stay in this drill because you can really feel your weight distribution and you can really feel these wrist angles and straight arms because the swing is slow enough. You know, you're probably hitting this ball at 50 miles an hour, 40, 50 miles an hour. The shot's probably going 120, you know, 110, 120 yards, something like that. And that's perfectly fine. From here, you should be able to feel the hips pushing forward, the knees pushing forward. Now, see how much more, how much deeper the hands are at this position at P6 than over here on the left. Look at the right foot, it's still down on the ground. Look at the left heel, still down on the ground. And then as you move into impact, still got much much more forward shaft lean. That's what we're looking for at impact right there. Beautiful flat left wrist, right foot, take a look at your right foot. It's not up on the toe and the the the, uh, the knee is not breaking, you know, breaking in toward the golf ball. It's banking. The right foot is banking in toward the ball. Your arms stay extended through the shot. You have much more extension in your fall through. Okay, so I know you can make this motion. You're, what you're demonstrating on the right is exactly perfect. We just have to rep this motion. Okay, on the right, you have me here demonstrating this flying wedge drill. Um, I just, just happened to be doing this yesterday for a student, and so I thought I would throw it up here for you to look at. But, you know, notice our, our the similarities in our, uh, in our setup position. Obviously, we're very, very similar. As I move the club away, you can see there's no lateral weight shift away from the golf ball. I stay very, very centered. Left arm going just a little bit past parallel. But the keys are watch my left knee and hip push forward at the change of direction. You can see my lower center is pushing forward. And you can see how my wrist angles are staying intact. As I come into the golf ball, I've got a tremendous amount of forward shaft lean a flat left wrist and I'm able to stay extended and my arms are staying straight through the golf ball. The key there is that my shoulders do not stop, they do not stall, they continue to turn through the ball.
Okay, Shannon, one last demonstration here. I now put um, Daniel Summer Hayes here on the right. He's a PGA Tour player, and I feel like he's got probably some of the best lower body action in all of golf. So I want you to take a look quickly at his motion. Club moves away, stays very, very centered on his pivot away from the ball. Looks very similar to yours. Right knee straightening, left knee flexing. But watch his change of direction. I mean, literally, as his club is still moving back, his hips are now starting to push forward and uncoil. Do you see that? You see how he settles into his left side? His left knee and left hip push forward. And because his lower center has moved forward, you, you'll you notice how straight his right leg appears. I mean, you could literally draw a straight line down it. Right foot's firmly on the ground. You'll see the right foot start to bank in and then go up on the toe through impact. He's got a lot of forward shaft lean at impact. Look at the right foot banking, rolling, then up on the toe. So it's tuck hip, push hips forward, tuck tailbone, right foot bank, then roll and extend. Okay, so this is what, what I want you to focus on. I want you to get in this flying wedge drill. I only want the club to go back to about right here, left arm parallel to the ground. From that point, I want you to start down by, number one, initiating the downswing simply by taking your left hip Left knee, left hip, pushing them forward first as the club changes directions. Okay? And then as you come down, I want you to feel your right leg getting very straight. I want you to feel like you're pushing your, your pelvis toward the target before you start to spin it and open to the left. You'll feel your right leg get very long. It's almost like you're running out of right leg. The right foot will bank, and it may even drag. Some players do this so aggressively, they drag their foot on the inside of the right foot toward the target. It'll bank and then go up on the toe. Okay, The banking action is a result of the hips pushing forward maximally. You'll see that Shannon, had, Shannon, you'll see that Daniel has taken his belt buckle and raised it to the target. Okay, Give me a call if you have any questions.